Shalom to the nation of Israel. This is Barazal coming in spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Racha Kodash. Double honors to the Apostle of Great Millstone and to the hopeful elect, pushing his word in truth and sincerity across the four corners of the earth. It's going to be a quick one, but an important one. All right, just talking about being a servant of the Lord and how, you know, when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, He'll take care of you, and when you're not, you throw you away, right? Ultimately, right? He will give you chances because He has mercy and He's long suffering, but eventually, if you really turn your way from the plow, He's going to throw you away, right? Just a quick one. So let's start off. At oh. Ecclesiasticus two and eight. Ye that fear the Lord, believe in believe him, and your reward shall not fail. Right? So if you fear the Lord, fear Yahweh Shem Yah Shai, you're gonna believe in him, you're gonna have faith. Right, and your reward should not fail. And part of the reward, well, you know, it's being uh, getting our bodies changed, ruling in the kingdom, right? You know, all the women, everything, the, the money, the wealth, but also mainly being protected when uh, in Jacob's trouble, when um, this devil, right, shows his horns and he comes at us like a flood, right? Those times he says he's gonna protect us, right? He's serving, he's gonna protect his servants, and also scriptures say. My servants shall eat and they shall they shall drink, right? So you're gonna be in in, in straits. You're gonna be in in a, in a tough situations where you're not like food and water, and even shelter is not gonna be readily available. You might have shelter, but you might not have the food and water, or you might have the food and water and not the shelter. You know, or you might not have either of them, right? So it's it's gonna every everybody's lot is gonna be different, but the point is that the Lord's gonna take care of you, all right. Um, I think there was more. And then verse 9. He that fear the Lord, hope for good and everlasting joy and mercy. Look at the generations of old and see, did, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? The answer is no. You can look at all the stories of our, um, of the, the ancient men, right? And their situations, and these battles and war and all these crazy situations, and when they trust in the Lord, He always saved them out of it. Always. When they actually feared Him and trusted in Him, they, they, He always saved them out of it. No matter how dire and how crazy and how how uh, slim your chance of getting out of it looks, as long as they trusted in Yahweh Shem Shai, He saved them out of it. Or did any abide in His fear? And was forsaken. Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? The answer is no. No one. Right? For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long suffering and very pitiful, and forgiveth sins and saveth in the time of affliction. Woe be to fearful hearts and faint hands and the sinner that go two ways. Right? So you gotta trust in the Lord. If there's a walk you're supposed to be walking in, or a direction you're supposed to be walking, in, you gotta walk in that direction, no matter what's on the road. No matter what's in your path, right? You got to trust that he's going to guide you through it and protect you on that path. Woe unto him that is faint hearted, for he believeth not. Therefore, shall he not be defended, right? So if you don't believe in Yahweh Shem Shai, he's not going to defend you. That's just the reality. And sometimes he has to humble you for you to, to, to remind you about that, right? Which is a good thing that he's doing that, because he's that you know sometimes he has a you know your your son, you have to um, discipline him, right? Because we're not perfect. You're gonna you're gonna mess up. It's gonna happen. We're in the flesh, but the point is when that happens to understand why it's happening, right? And not and also when you're in that state of being humbled, right? Catching hell, however you're catching the hell, always understand that this is part of the process of being purged, right? All those uh, uh, infirmities, right? 
impurities. That's the word I'm looking for. Impurities that you're, you're they're getting, you're getting purged out. So it's all part of the process. Um, the last one, verse 14, woe unto you that have lost patience. And what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you? And the answer is that you're not going to be able to do anything. Right? The ones that lost patience are the ones that turned away from the truth. The ones that stopped doing their work. Right? They put the plow down. And went back into the world. So when the Lord comes, right? When Yahweh Shai comes, right? When he visits us, you're screwed. Because he's not going to protect you. And really, if when he comes, when he comes back, you're already screwed because uh, if you already turn your back, you're going to take the chip, the C hip. You're already, you're already taking it at that time. So you're already screwed anyways. As soon as you take that, you're done. So when he comes, he's just he's just uh, executing judgment. Everyone that uh, chose to serve the devil, right? It gets wiped out. Everyone that chose to serve Yahweh Hashem Shai gets uh, delivered, right? So now we're going to go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 14 and 33. For Yahweh is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all the churches of the saints. Right? So he's not the author of confusion. If he says, you know, if you trust in him and you fear him, you call upon him, he'll protect you, then he's going to protect you. Right? It's very simple. So you have to always remember that when you're in these situations because it's, you know, you're going to get caught up in the flesh and you might forget. Right? So he might send people to remind you or he might just talk to you directly. Right? However he does it or he might do it through a TV show. You might be watching a TV show and you get reminded. However, he can do anything. Right? But you got to stay uh, uh, circumspect and keen and be able to see when that happens. Right? You got to be, um, have your head on a swivel because he will if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, right? If you're constantly enduring, he will show you that. Right? You just gotta you gotta keep your eyes open. Um, and now we're gonna go to John 10 and 15. John 10 and 15. As the is how shy talking, as the father knoweth me, even so know I the father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Right? So the sheep are the elect. Right? And the elect are going to be doing what they're supposed to be doing, right? Serving the Lord to the best of their ability, right? So if they're doing that because they're following Yahweh Shai, who is the shepherd, he's going to lay his life for you. He's going to protect you in whatever situation you're in, right? And then we're going to go to Revelation 3 and 15. Revelation 3 and 15, but if you're not uh, following the shepherd, right, you're not being a, a, a meek and humble and, and, uh, um, and uh, what's the word? Well, you're not being a meek and humble sheep that's serving Yahweh Shem Yashai, right? He's going to throw you away. Revelation 3 and 15, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot, I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm, so lukewarm is like being in the middle, right? Being on the fence. And neither cold nor hot, because if you're cold, you're not really in it. If you're hot, you're on fire. I will spew thee out of my mouth. Right? So that means he'll throw you away. So you can't be lukewarm. It's either you're cold. Really, he said, I'd rather you cold or hot. Right? Obviously, you don't want to be cold. But he's, this is what he said, right? So if you're cold, it's not good. But he said he'd rather you be cold, right? He'd rather you be cold or hot. Obviously, we all want to be hot. because But, it, you know, things are going to happen. You might get cold. And he had to slap you up and wake you up, you know? Slap you up a couple times. And he lash you and wake you up. And then, like, yo, let's go. And you turn hot again. Right? But obviously, you want to stay hot. So you have to constantly... It's about repetition, right? You have to constantly um, do what you're supposed to be doing every day to the best of your ability. Because it's a job. It's just like when you go to... Uh, you do sports, right? You have uh, drills that you do. 
to stay hot. You warm up, right? So it's good to, uh, to find your own routine that keeps you hot so you don't get cold. Because if you go into a game when you're cold, you don't perform well, right? You're pulling muscles. You might, you might blow it. You might, might tear a muscle, pull a muscle. Your body's not moving 100% because it's not warmed up properly, right? Uh, the last one, so we go to Ecclesiasticus 2 and read from 1. Ecclesiasticus 2 and 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So you have to prepare yourself because, remember, Satan now is, oh, okay. He's going to send his demons on you, right? To tempt you to try and go back into the world. To try and go off the, the path, Right? Set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. Right? So constantly endure. Set your, your, your heart, which is your mind, set it right in the right direction. And at the end of the day, you can't really, we can't really see the path. We can't see the path. That was the point I wanted to make. We can't see the path. The point is we're just supposed to look, focus on Yahweh Shai. Because we, at the end of the day, we don't see what's going to come in, in front of us. We don't know what's going to happen to us in the future. Because if we did, that means we can see the path. Right? So the point is you're just supposed to focus on Yahweh, uh, well, Yahweh Shai. Right? You're supposed to focus on Yahweh Shai. He will lead you in the right direction. Just focus on him. Right? Uh, verse 3. Cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. So basically what I just said. So you got to cleave unto Yahweh Shai. Unto Yahweh Ba Shem Shai. But Yahweh Shai is our mediator. Right? So we got to He's the one we see. He's the one we focus on. Because he is our, our mediator to Yahweh. Right? So we have to focus on Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is the way. So wherever he goes, we go. Because we can't see the path. But we can see him. Right? And he's perfect. So focus on him. If you focus on him, you're good. You're good. Right, so that's it on that. Um, just want to make a quick one, but an important one nonetheless. Hopefully, this lesson was edifying to the hopeful elect that pushes word and truth and sincerity across the four corners of the earth. And shalom till next time.